It's common to find pathologies or any form of damage or injury in the fossilized bones of theropod dinosaurs, yet these anomalies are quite uncommon in the dinosaur's teeth. You don't get many fossils or reports of fossils of messed up doofers, and yet that is a quite common thing to see among animals today. One more fossil instance of this has just been described and it comes from everyone's favorite ever-shifting spiny reptile. The layer of rocks known as the Kemkem -Kem group is located in eastern Morocco and is famous for its abundance of dinosaur teeth, particularly those belonging to the theropod Spinosaurus. This group of dinosaurs dates back to the middle of the Cretaceous period. Even though there have been hundreds or probably thousands of teeth found from this dinosaur or very close relatives, there has not been a single case of dental disease or malformation documented as of yet. That was until a new paper by Roy Smith and uh, David Martill. Let's ignore him for the remainder of this video. In their paper, published in the journal Cretaceous Research, they discuss an odd collection of issues with a tooth that has been given a generic label of Spinosaurus. That means it most likely belongs to this genus, but whether it belongs to the species Spinosaurus aegyptiacus or an unknown species remains unknown. This specimen may be the first instance in which paleopathology has been discovered in the tooth of a spinosaurine spinosaurid dinosaur. Spinosaurus, a theropod dinosaur that lived in North Africa during the mid to late Cretaceous, has attracted a lot of interest during the last 20 years, in part due to the fact that it is shrouded in such a great deal of mystery. Even when Ernst von Stromer discovered it in 1912, it was easily distinguished as particularly unique compared to other theropods. This was in part due to its enormous dorsal sail, which was made up of extraordinarily long neural spines. In addition to this, its skull was huge and pointy and its teeth resembled those of crocodiles rather than theropods. This added to the dinosaur's overall appeal. The Baharaya Formation in Egypt, which dates back to the middle of the Cretaceous, is where the first specimen was discovered. Teeth and other isolated bits and bobs have been discovered in Algeria and Morocco, where they have been found more often than in other countries. More recently in Morocco, articulated bones of a peculiar and enormous dinosaur have been discovered. They most likely belong to a Spinosaurus of a type, but which type that is remains hard to pin down. These bones provide light on essential aspects of the dinosaur's adaptations and reveal how it moved. The Iphizoan formation of the Kemkem -Kem group is a location in which Spinosaurus teeth are often discovered on their own, and local fossil hunters frequently quarry and mine them. In point of fact, a bone bed can be found in Tarda that contains the teeth of Spinosaurus as well as the front teeth of the sclerorhynchoid Oncopristus. Because of the vast number of dinosaur teeth that have been found, this issue has received a lot of interest, and a great number of academic articles have been published regarding their occurrence, preservation, form, histology, and isotopic composition. I even published a video on a paper about a cache of Spinosaurus teeth not too long ago. It covered the oxygen isotopes found within them. In spite of the fact that it had such a large number of teeth, the new paper by Smith and Martill is the very first instance of dental paleopathology discovered in a spinosaurine spinosaurid. Only a split carina in a baryonychine from the Castrillo de la Reina formation in Spain and a microscopic break in the lining of the pulp cavity in a tooth from a Spinosaurus, also from Morocco, have previously been reported as dental problems in Spinosaurus. The tooth described in this paper, FSACKK7326, is located in the paleontology collections of the University of King Hassan II, Ein Chalk, Casablanca, Morocco. The researchers took photos of the fossil with a Nikon camera and then processed those images with some fancy computer software for topographical work. This tooth was part of a mixed assemblage of teeth obtained from a commercial fossil collector in Urfoud, a Saharan town at the center of the Moroccan fossil trade. 
Unfortunately, a lot of fossils described with the help of David Martill seem to come from the fossil trade. Would be super cool to see projects with his name attached where the fossil comes from his own country, own institution, or that was collected by a known institution in thoroughly vetted locality. But alas, the fossil trade seems to have a strong hold on him. I lied, Martil is the tetrapod Ophis and Ubirahara guy. Anyway, some of the matrix that was clinging to the tip of the tooth's crown and its base is supposedly consistent with a stratigraphic source from the Iphazoan formation of the Chem Chem group that crops out and is extensively collected in the region. This is probably right considering the variables at play, but because it was not collected by the authors or someone who documented its collection, no one can really say without a shadow of a doubt precisely what rock layer it came from. But again, alas. The authors do note that the white dentine interior and golden brown enamel exterior of this tooth are consistent with northern localities of the area such as Zhrigat, Dura, Tarda, and Ikif and Takmaut. Like I said, this is probably spot on, but how do they know for sure? So here's the tooth. Not particularly impressive, nor does it have any super obvious pathologies to the untrained eye beyond its bent shape. Spinosaurus teeth are usually straight, for your information. According to the authors, the tooth is considered pathological due to three longitudinal grooves that extend from the tooth's crown to the base. A single groove that is found on the midline of the labial or lip side surface with two grooves closely spaced together on the lingual or tongue side surface. A faint carina or serration on the midline face of the tooth that doesn't extend to the tip of the crown or its base, no carina near the tip of the tooth, and the curved shape I mentioned earlier. The overall shape of the tooth provided by the pathologies makes it exceedingly different and unlike any other tooth observed in the dinosauria, normal or diseased. Grooves on tooth crowns have been documented for various archosaura forms, including dinosauria, although they vary dramatically from the grooves found here. Other studies have discovered non-pathological longitudinal grooves in the teeth of metriacanthosaurids, tyrannosaurids, abelosaurids, allosaurids, Peravians, and Mononychus. All of these described grooves, however, are quite weak as compared to those observed in this unique Spinosaurus tooth. These peculiar grooves have a superficial similarity to the grooves discovered on the exterior and inner surfaces of the teeth of Uachitodon, a venomous archosauriform from Triassic Virginia. However, as I already said, it is just superficial. Theropod dental pathologies are exceedingly rare and can include anomalies such as split or diverging carinae, double cusped crowns, crowns with multiple rows of serrations or denticles, and grotesque root and crown abnormalities. Diverging carinae are by far the most widely described of these dental disorders. These carinae often appear in tyrannosaurids, including Tyrannosaurus rex itself, and may be seen in certain fossils. This condition is characterized by the presence of a single serrated mesial carina that diverges basally. There is evidence that this illness was present in as much as 29% of the tyrannosaurid teeth that were obtained from Cretaceous strata. Paleopathologies in this tooth are defined as a series of grooves running the length of the crown and part way into the root. The appearance of three deeply etched grooves seems to represent a disease unique to dinosaurs. The authors believe the tooth remained in the jaw for some time, owing to the existence of a modest terminal wear facet. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top as tier Tyrannosaurus patrons, Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.